My name is Santiago Antañón, I'm from Drexel University, and I'm going to uh, present you uh, a demo of a game prototype uh, I have been working on uh, for a couple of months called uh, Shortloo. So the key idea behind Shortloo uh, came from uh, Terry Winograd's classic system, also called, called Shortloo. So I've been fascinated by uh, Winograd's Shortloo for uh, many years. Uh, it was one of the first AI systems I ever read about. And uh, so Winograd Shirtloo was uh, the system that demonstrated natural language understanding by interacting with uh, this planning system that could uh, execute commands and answer questions about a blog's world. So the question I had is, uh, could we build a game uh, around a system like Shirtloo? Uh, so I was think I've been thinking about that for uh, for several years, and eventually I decided to actually try to do that. And uh, the game that I came up with. Uh, is also named Sherlock, just to add to the confusion. Uh, so Sherlock is this uh, adventure game uh, set up in a science fiction setting. Uh, what I'm going to present you today is just a little prototype of part of the story world of Sherlock. And in this game, uh, you interact with non-player characters, which are robots, that behave in a very similar way to Winograd's Sherlock. So I'm not going to uh, actually show you, show you the whole story of the game. I'm actually just going to skip uh, part of the tutorial and the intro story so I can show you how the interaction with these characters actually works. All right, so I'm just going to skip. I'm going to hit play, but I'm going to skip uh, forward uh, until some part later in the story. OK, so I just forwarded to the part of the story where I want it. So at this point, the main character in the story just wakes up. Uh, the character is very confused, so, I, uh, so he doesn't know where he is. So anyway, so the first thing that we have to do in this game is basically interact uh, with uh, the non-player characters uh, in the game just to figure out what is going on. So the first character that we can talk to is called a Tauin, with which uh, we can talk via communicator. This character is not a robot, it's just the AI that oversees this space station where we are. So I can just try to talk to him, I can say, uh, hi Tauin. So a Tauin doesn't know what is my name, so he's just saying hello human, so I can say, my name is Santi, uh, and from that point on, uh, uh, Tauin knows uh, who I am. So if I if I just say again, hi Tauin, it now is going to uh, refer to me as my uh, for my name. So anyway, so in, in in this game, as I was saying, you interact with other characters as we're seeing here uh, by talking to them. Uh, so the first thing that we have to do in the game is figuring out what what is going on, right? So the character doesn't know where where he or she is, so. I could, for example, try to figure it out. It's like, where am I? Well, some, some event just triggered because I was being very slow. But basically, it how it responded, you are in bedroom five. This is not actually what I wanted uh, to know because I want to know what is this place. So I can just say, where is bedroom five? And then we start getting there. It's like we're in Aurora Station, but I don't know what it is. So what is Aurora Station? So I could start asking questions and figuring out information. So they, uh, basically the NPCs of this game has an, have a knowledge base, and I can start querying this knowledge base with several questions, uh, etc. But uh, I can also uh, interact with them in some more interesting ways, uh, as I will show you later. So for now, I'm just going to... Uh, Maybe ask a couple more questions. I'm going to ask, who are you? Just to get a bit more information. So my name is Tawin. Now we figure out, we realize that uh, this character is, is an AI. Uh, but okay, so we don't want to talk more to this. Okay, so you just uh, say bye. So we can walk around this station as in any other adventure game. At this point, the character, main character is trying to figure out if there is anyone around. Uh, so every time you walk into a room, I will say, oh, there's no one here, no one here either. So I'm just going to try to figure out if there's someone by interacting with the character. For example, I'm going to say, I'm going to call Tauin's attention again. I'm going to say, is there any human in the station, for example? And he says, yes, OK. That's uh, not what I wanted to know, because I wanted to know where they are. So I can say, where are the humans? And it basically says, I am in the central corridor. So uh, that's not the answer I was expecting for, but uh, I guess it is an answer. So I can say, um, are there any other humans in the station? Oops, that's too long a question. I can just say, 
is there any other human in the station? Yeah, that's not good. Oops, so all of a sudden we figure out that there's actually no other human in the station. So this is going to trigger some uh, some event. Uh, Italian basically uh, realizes that uh, there's been some anomaly in the memory bank and some something happened. So I'm just going to skip some of that text. Uh, and basically asked me to go find Sherlo, which is this maintenance robot that uh, supposed to help at how in this main AI uh, to figure out why the memory banks are erased. So it asked me to go find Sherlo. Uh, I can say sure, I'll go find Sherlo. Uh, that's how it thanks me, and then it asks, it tells me where Sherlo go. Uh, I don't want to know at this point, but it basically asked me to go someplace and. I can get the key of the garage from uh, from QWERTY, so I don't know where QWERTY is, so I can say where is QWERTY, I can say QWERTY infirmary, but I don't know where that is, where is the infirmary, and it says the infirmary is west of me, okay, so I can walk west and try to find the infirmary, which is basically the room where you start the game, but it's a little far, so I'm just walking around. And perhaps I should made should have made the station a bit smaller, but uh, all right. So this is QWERTY. So I can say hi QWERTY. A human. And what I wanted to get out of QWERTY, if you remember, is it says that QWERTY has the garage key, right? So I can say where is the garage key, for example. This is all I have. Here, right? Can I have the? I'm gonna try. QWERTY has several keys, but uh. I just talked about the garage key, so I can just say the key. I'm not going to say the garage key, I'm just going to say the key. So it gave me a key, which is the garage key. right? So notice that I didn't actually say the garage key, but since I just we were just talking about the garage key, uh, by the referencing uh, this uh, article, the, it knows that I'm referring to the key that we were just talking about, right? So the natural language uh, parsing, um, processing modules of of, uh, of this game of Shortlu, they can res resolve these kind of ambiguities in the language. Okay, so I just restarted the game and went back to the same point in the story. So another of the features uh, that uh, the AI of the NPCs have, similar to what uh, Shortlu was able to do, like Winograd Shortlu was able to do, is they can actually do inference. So in th in this particular case. Uh, the AIs, all the knowledge that, they, that the NPCs in this game have is represented using some logical uh, representation formalism. So for example, I have this uh, key combination with which I can bring all the information that AIs have, uh, all the long-term memory, like the ontology that they can recognize, etc. This is just for, uh, for debugging purposes. Uh, I'm not going to go through that now. But Everything that the, that the NPCs perceive and everything that the player says or that the NPCs say is represented using this logical formalism. So they can actually reason about it. So for example, uh, at this point, the AI probably doesn't know certain things about me. So for example, I can say, um, Tau, I'm just going to call it attention so it knows I'm talking to it. I can say, am I mortal? It doesn't know, right? But if I say, oh, Humans are mortal. And now I'll ask again, am I mortal? And it says yes. Now all of a sudden it knows, right? And I, I for example, you could even uh, tell it things about other people that the AI doesn't know. For example, if I say, who uh, is Socrates? Uh, of course the AI doesn't know who Socrates is, but we can tell it. Well, it doesn't even understand the word right now, but I can say Socrates uh, was a human. okay it actually gave me two okay because it actually got uh, two pieces of information one that there was a there's an entity called Socrates and the other one that this Socrates was a human but anyway this is just because it's a, a current prototype so now I can actually say I can ask who is Socrates and it will say Socrates was a human or is a human I can even ask uh, is Socrates mortal and it will have to say yes because I already told it that uh, all humans are mortal so this is a very, very simple form of inference, but uh, the AIs have this full inference engine uh, based on resolution, which is a complete uh, uh, inference engine. So basically, in principle, anything, any 
any type of rules, any type of information you can actually uh, give to the AIs, anything that they can parse, they can reason about. So in principle, you could even try to teach it how to play a game based on uh, all the information that you give. Of course, it will be very hard right now because the natural language uh, parsing uh, is not up to the task at this point. But in principle, the reasoning abilities of the, of the AIs are such that it, they could actually learn how to play a game and you could ask them what move would you make in this situation, etc. Uh, so anyway, so this is this is Shirlu. Uh, it is a current product. It is a very early prototype. Uh, I wouldn't dare uh, letting other people play the game right now, just because uh, the natural language parsing at this point is very brittle, and the game might break uh, fairly easily. But uh, the current prototype shows that it's feasible. Uh, the interactions that you can uh, do with the NPCs are kind of interesting. They understand. Uh, fairly large a set of questions and, and sentences you can say very limited at this point but fairly large uh, so far uh, and of course the story is not complete uh, the game story is supposed to have uh, four parts only the first part is implemented uh, right now it's playable beginning to end but uh, only beginning to end of the first part of the story uh, so anyway i hope uh, you enjoyed this demo thanks